Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom, or sorry, upper left-hand corner, we have Bisu starting as the red Protoss. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Larva, aka Nexion Hong 9, starting as the white Zerg. This is from 2015, just about. And then it is on the map du jour of the times, Fighting Spirit, the Python of that era. I'm not sure if it was... Fighting Spirit was the map, you know? Uh, for a long period of time, and I think 2015 does count for that era. Bisu, I think this might be when Bisu was at his strongest and potentially the best player out there. Him and Flash, really. Here's the thing, Bisu never went to StarCraft 2 at any point. It's actually funny, I was at BlizzCon and I saw a bunch of Korean pros walking in and Bisu was amongst them. And I was like, OMG, Korean StarCraft pro players, nobody knows who they are, here at BlizzCon going watching a StarCraft 2 tournament live. And so they uh, all kind of marched in and hung out towards the rear while the tournament was going on. And it was, first of all, it was an epic moment because like everybody was like cheering and going crazy. But what I find hilarious is, is Bisu just kind of like sitting back taking it all in. And I'm pretty sure that was the moment where Bisu's like, nah. Not gonna bother with this. Like right there, he's like, not the game for me. So I feel like I was in proximity to Bisu when he opted to stick with Brood War, which is a bit unfortunate because I think he actually would have been incredible at StarCraft 2 considering how crazy high his APM is. But uh, go figure. Anyway, gateway opener from him. Upper left hand corner, Overlord is gonna spot, I think gonna spot it before even that Zealot's on its way. In the meantime, we do have a 12 hatch. Bisu scouting up right-hand corner first. So, gonna have some trouble. Well, let's see if he's, this drone gets... Yeah, okay, drone immediately pulls back. There gets the spot. This is an incredible matchup in particular because Larva is just infinitely creative. And Bisu just... This is his best matchup and always has been. He just... I think arguably throughout time, you can say that Bisu just is the master of versus Zerg at large. Probe Scout going to make it past what I assume is going to turn into a third base as it migrates out. Two Zerglings going to hold the line to go ahead and block information and it's actually really critical to get information versus Larva. Extractor being grabbed. I think this is pre-973 era. Yeah, this is way before 973. So I think this is still where three hatch mutalisk was more of the standard thing, but here's the thing, this is Larva, you have no, you just never know with Larva. Just what you know is, is that sometimes I feel like Larva's builds, they start off like scattered, where it's just like, what is it? It's like someone who, it's like someone who does one of those paintings where you have no idea what's going on in the painting and then all of a sudden they make like three last strokes at the last second and all of a sudden it's a picture. It's like, what is this? It's like, oh, it's a mountain with an eagle sort of thing like that. That's how I feel like Larva's builds go sometimes. Anyway, bo bottom right, natural expansion being grabbed, which will be a little bit more challenging to defend. That probe trying to hunt for that third base. Gas is up and being mined merrily. Natural expansion has been grabbed by Bisu as well. Forge and Zealots going ahead and drawing back to potentially deal with Zerglings should they make their way back across the map and go for a counterattack. He's grabbing his assimilator as well. Zerglings running back across to try to engage that probe. You can see Bisu, here's the thing, look at this probe, hasn't even taken any base damage. Like a little bit of shield, but not even any base damage. Uh, the only, one thing though is, is he still has been pushed back by Larva's Zerglings and hasn't gotten a look at the saturation at the natural. And interestingly enough, Larva going for the lair at the natural expansion. So I'm not sure what's going, this might just be him clowning a little bit, but so going for the lair at the natural, Grabbing the third base on the low ground at the bottom right. So I think he's just trying to maybe try to play mind games with Bisu if Bisu sends out. I don't know, we'll see how this works. This would be easy to scout by ground with the probe, but if a Corsair makes its direction kind of into the main and is expecting like a high ground play right there, might be a little bit of information advantage. Zealots marching their way across. We have five of them streaming out on the map. Cybernetics Court is up, but no Stargate as of yet. And it looks like this is going to be just three hatch play. Never mind, sorry, the layer right there. Derp. Larva fooled me in my tired state. Zelts marching the way across with that probe. The probe going to go ahead and make its way back to 
back to home. This is should force a lot of Zerglings out. Good surround by Larva, though. Great surround. But Bisu, look at that micromanagement. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. I expected with a surround like that from Larva that those Zealots were going to get absolutely mauled. Instead, Bisu just pairing up and really making those Zerglings work. So, five Zerglings and a couple out to the right remain. More Zealots out on the front. Plus one weapons being upgraded. Stargate is up. First Corsair in production. Lair on the way. Spire being built in the main. Maybe the, slip, maybe the logic behind this was because it is Bisu. Have the lair at the natural expansion so it has higher HP to deal with potential zealot pressure. Maybe something along those lines. Kind of a side, kind of an interesting thought actually is, you know, have the beefier hatchery that might be taking more damage. Anyway, fourth hatch being dropped. Corsair making its way out, plus one weapons, and Citadel of Adun being dropped as well. Corsair should be able to march out and get that confirmation. Looks like a fifth hatch being dropped, bottom right. I believe this is going to be Spire uh, back towards five hatch Hydralisk, potentially, but we'll see if a six hatchery is dropped, and I, as I say that, a six hatchery being dropped in the main. Corsair finding the third hatchery, I have to assume Bisu presumes that the, the fourth is going up. No additional gateways as of yet for a gateway flood, so it is poten so plus one weapons being researched and no second Stargate as well. Zelt Lake Speed is being upgraded, a cannon being dropped as well. A gateway being dropped actually on the low ground at the natural expansion. Corsair is making their way across, checking upper right the Zerglings, trying to engage those Zealots. They're marching their way out. The fr there is a gap here to go ahead and make a run. I wonder if Larva is going to go for it. He's currently holding back. Plus one weapons is a ways away. Scourge are migrating with that Zealot to go ahead and keep eyes on that attack force. The Zerglings now springing into action to try to trail them. Maybe go for a pincer attack. SimCity up. Evolution Chamber, Sutton Colony coming online just as the Zealots are reaching there. Bisu retreating. Re-engaging with those Zerglings on that bridge. But it looks like those Zealots are going to be cleaned up fairly easily this time. Nice SimCity here. In the bottom right as well, single sunk colony behind that. Hydrosten being constructed as well. So now we have movements towards six hex, bleh, six hack, six hatch hydralisk. Had that H sound in there. Made it sound like six hack. Spore colony being built as well. Zerglings making their way back around. There are zealots to go ahead and greet them. Now the Corsairs starting to regroup and field out. Plus one weapons just about finished. Feeling better about my timing with that in general. Two additional gateways being plopped down, but right now Larva in a strong position is going to be on four bases versus just the two from Bisu. Bisu hasn't really, I mean, he's forced some Zerglings out, but Larva, not that far behind in the overall worker count, in a very comfortable position as far as that goes, is going to have a third and fourth gas very, very comfortably. And these Zealots have more or less been negated by Zerglings this entire time. There is a second creep colony on the front. And there have been enough, there's just honestly enough larva, four larva on the ground where I don't know that those zerglings were all that costly as far as delayed production. Bisu trying to grab that 12 o'clock base. Feels like this is a little bit exposed. The zerglings gonna wander up, at least spot it. I don't think larva has enough ground troops. So yeah, actually, ooh, able to force that probe back, not able to get the probe kill, trying to make his way around the Zealots, but nice blockade. That bought Bisu a lot of time right there. Seven Corsairs migrating out. I'm wondering if I missed some Overlords getting pecked away at on the forward field. Looks like they're still standing. Hydralis count growing. You can see they're getting very protective of those Overlords. Bottom right hand base, pretty well saturated. Gas has not been grabbed yet though, so no, no third or fourth gas as of yet for Larva. He is sitting at 41 workers, however. This is a pretty solid count. He's way behind, though, Bisu's raw troop count, but also keep in mind a lot of that troop count is in Corsair. And the Corsair, well, actually might be able to shred the Overlords now that the Hydralists have moved out. Bisu finding the time there, re-engaging, positioning back, shredding those Scourge. One Corsair does go down, but still able to peck away at an Overlord, put Larva in the red, 
Gonna sweep back around. They don't care about that single spore. They can go ahead and exchange damage. Might not even lose shield. Getting even... Oh, wow. Deep in the red now. Hydralisk's moving up to the natural expansion to try to create some disruption, but with no Overlord in place, a Dark Templar disrupting all of that. The Corsair sweeping across to go ahead and engage any Overlord that might be nearby as well. So the Dark Templar, even though it's got... Wow, it's, I'm shocked it's only got zero kills thus far. Corsair is going to sweep this direction. Eating a little bit of damage from the Hydralisks. But right now, Larva is pinned back, and he's down 30 supply. The attack force now on the ground starting to grow for Bisu. He's got the High Templar mixed in, plus two weapons on the way. Five gateways overall. Well, technically, yeah, six gateways overall. Forgot about that one that was sitting at the natural expansion and the one that was hidden behind the natural expansion. Drones transferring bottom right additional. Wow, this is going to be a lot of hatcheries. So we got five hatcheries in the bottom right-hand corner alone for macro. So Larva looking to just do a sudden burst of troops, a Dark Templar and some cannons trying to protect this 12 o'clock base. I believe that's going to be sufficient to draw these Hydralisks back. But the problem for Bisu right now is that Larva has managed to get a very large worker count. And with all of these hatcheries on the ground, and four bases to roll with. Larva is going to be able to step on the gas in short order. Overlord speed now online, plus two weapons on the way for the Hydralisks. Although Bisu, that's a lot of Zealots. A good, well, only two High Templar, three High Templar in between. The so Chris there is sweeping out, seeing the three hatcheries bottom right. I'm wondering if this is going to trigger a response. Yeah, app immediately triggers a response. The Zealots starting to make their way across. Especially seeing how well saturated these bases are. And seeing those three macro hatches, Beast who knows he needs to strike before Lava has an opportunity to go ahead and fill in that troop count. The Hydralisks moving to the north. They want another shot at the 12 o'clock location. High Templar and Dark Templar are there. Corsair is nearby to go ahead and wipe out any overlords that might assist with that attack. However, the Corsair is briefly getting caught. The Zealots now streaming in. This is two, looks like two control groups of Zealots. And Psystorm over the wall to help break that Sim City. Two lurkers being morphed to go ahead and plug that gap. The egg being assaulted. Now there's no detection here for Bisu, and it looks like the Hydralisk is going to go ahead and engage. They want to go ahead and wipe out these zealots on the retreat. Overlord sweeping across, able to spot the High Templar that were morphing into an Archon are now going to get wiped out. So Bisu. Actually, like, wow, 50 supply ahead. Dark Templar in a shuttle looks like it, uh, I'm not sure how much damage. Did that get a lot of damage? No. So it got spotted. Another Overlord wiped out. So the shuttle got engaged at some point. It looks like by some Scourge. There's still some Scourge on patrol right there. The shuttle might not be long for life. It's just going to shoot that gap. No, it gets wiped out. Kind of a null factor altogether. <coughs> Lurker's being added. To Larva's overall group count. Dragoons also joining the fray. However, the Dragoons expose heads up. Well, they got superior upgrades, though, for Bisu. So able to tra trade pretty well against those Hydralisks. Bisu also moving to the upright hand corner to go ahead and grab yet another base. Lurkers retreating. Still no observer overhead, and that shuttle slowed down those observers even further. Maybe it was snuck in between while the observatory was being built. Hydra streaming across the map to the 12 o'clock location. Bisu's attack force a bit in between. There are lurkers between here and there. And again, okay, there is an observer, two observers along the rear. The Hydra is going to go ahead and back out because there's a Dark Templar right there and no Overlord. Bisu engaging that army, getting great size storms across the lurker line. The observers right there as soon as the Dragoons are in place. The Hydra sweeping from the rear are going to be able to pick off the High Templar before Psystorm... Well, never mind. It's going to say before Psystorm was expended, but dropping those Psystorm at the very last second. Larva looks like he's going to be able to sweep this army up. But while that's happening, the Corsair is hunting for Overlords in the rear, trying to find... Well, able to see troop counts, but not able to find exposed Overlords. Looks like they're hugging... 
Just want to get eyes to see whether it's hive tech potentially. Sees the evolution chamber, queen's nest. Hive is up. Dragoon's just backing out into the nine o'clock location. Of course, hairs do find overlords. They're fulfilling their life's purpose. Dragoon's finally wiped out. So Larva able to wipe out Bisu's forward attack force, but he hasn't stopped this fourth base from coming online. And another attack force out in the field and overlords <coughs> gonna get caught. Well, maybe. Hydra is able to sweep in and save them last second. Some Scourge sweeping in. Are they going to be able to catch? Ugh, oh, no, not quite. So Bisu able to get, well, or what's spawning here? Some Hydra, it looks like. More, wow, massive amount of Scourge moving in. That's a lot of gas expended by Larva to wipe out these Corsair. Really frustrated. He's like, I'm done with them. Built a slew. Three Corsair remaining. That will greatly negate their effectiveness out in the field. Hydralisk is moving mid-map, and it looks like the last two are actually getting picked out mid-map on this. Yep, yeah, last Corsair. What a heroic fleet, though, huh? Plus two weapons, plus one armor, plus three weapons out for Bisu. Is he only running on... It looks like he's only running on a single forge. Main is mining out. Unless there's a... Nope, just a single forge. Versus, I believe this is going to be double evolution chamber. I'm trying to find the second one. Yeah, there's a second one in the main. Defiler Mound is up. So upgrade advantage starting to move towards Larva's favor and Larva starting to fill out that attack force. Hydra is able to catch a couple armies. Some Zerglings sprinting upper right being repelled by that Dark Templar that has been here, I believe, the entire match. Dragoons and Zealots trying to mirror the Hydralis movement to make sure that that upper right remains standing. Dark Temple are taking a bit of damage. Larva regrouping. Not a lot of lurkers on the ground. Mutalus switched now that those Corsairs have been dispatched, looking for, to strike some damage either at the 12 o'clock location or the main. Losing those Corsairs does open up this sort of tech switch, and here I was talking about just a previous game, I was talking about that possibility out of uh, another player, and instead Larva doing it right here. Getting a good amount of damage done. Corsair is being built in a hurry. And Bisu also trying to force these Mutalists back by engaging a huge attack force bottom right. Larva did not have his lurkers burrowed. So the Mutalists being forced back to engage this army and provide some support. Bisu still up 30 supply. Lurkers now moving forward. I don't feel like the Lurkers have even been finally dropping some initial spines. The Mutalisks engaging on top of the Dragoons should be able to clean the rest of that attack force up. This is buying time for Bisu to get some additional anti-air out on the field. A flood of Zerglings moving across to try to deal with those Dragoons. Bisu still with a sizable supply lead, but the superior upgrades of Larva are helping him really whittle down this army. Zerglings are able to get on top of Dragoons right here, though. Hydralis moving back. It looks like... <laughs> missed this in the meantime. Dark Templar dropping in the main. They should be able to get the spawning pool without too much trouble. So I guess that earlier shuttle was just to open up the possibility of the later shuttle. Just Bisu doing Bisu things. Big counterattack of Zerglings, and it looks like some Lurkers... Wanting to move upper right, they are able to catch some probes in transfer... I don't know that they're going to get a lot else. A Nexus being dropped despite everything. And the Dark Temple are being scooped up from bottom left, so they will live another day. Lurkers quickly wiped out. The Zerglings are going to be greeted by a lot of cannons. They do have the Adrenal upgrade at this stage, so keep in mind they can shoot through these cannons fairly rapidly. But there are, it looks like there are sufficient cannons to go ahead and negate that attack force. But now Defilers starting to take the field. Bisu still with the big supply lead. Overlord's on patrol, but that shuttle making its way bottom right to go ahead and drop here. There is a single Scourge. Not sure if that shuttle got spotted or not. Yeah, it's going to go ahead and move up. 
only a single shot, no overlords otherwise, and also a big secondary attack moving into that natural expansion. So the Dark Templar are going to be able to wipe out drone lines. But the Observer is a little bit late, and also Dark Swarm dropped at the natural. So Bisu going to have to hold short. It looks like he did have to cancel that natural expansion in the top right as well. One Dark Templar hiding bottom right as the second Dark Templar makes it way, it makes its way to the natural pulling a little bit of a yakety sax maneuver. And as they're engaging that Dark Templar, it looks like they're missing the Dark Templar bottom right and Bisu going for another attack into the natural expansion with a lot of Dragoons, which should quickly, with that plus three weapons, <coughs> take down that hatchery and that evolution chamber. And the Observers, as long as they position well against that Spore Colony, should be able to deal with the Lurkers momentarily. However, reinforcements in the form of everything, drones, hydralisks, lurkers, coming from the bottom right, but honestly feels way too little, way too late. Bisu with 156 supply now, plus one armor as well, starting to breach the natural expansion. One advantage here for Larva is I was going to say that his tech is located everywhere else, so he might be able to just try to survive bottom right for a little while, but instead just realizing that he's outmashed way behind the supply count and wasn't going to be able to stop Bisu's expansions in the upper right. Call GG right there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A good one. Thanks for listening.